But if you have dreams of freedom, of getting out of the rat race, the first question to ask yourself is, how do I respond to failure? If failure inspires you to win, maybe you should go for it. But only maybe. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's been having a, a good morning so far. So let's get into some reading to get you motivated and start the day off well. So you can think about finance, so you can think about things that you want to achieve, so you can think about different ways of doing things in order to be able to achieve a great success today. Let's move the camera a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we are on page 252. Uh, and we are ready to start from this point right here. But if you have dreams of freedom, of getting out of the rat race, the first question to ask yourself is, how do I respond to failure? If failure inspires you to win, maybe you should go for it, but only maybe. If failure makes you weak or, your, or causes you to throw temper tantrums, like spoiled brats who call attorneys to file lawsuits every time something doesn't go their way, then play it safe. Keep your daytime job or buy bonds or mutual funds. But remember, there is risk in those financial instruments too, even though they may appear safe. I say all this mentioning Texas, Texas and Fran Tarkenton because stacking the asset column is easy. It's really a low aptitude game. It doesn't take much education. Fifth grade math will do, but building your asset column is a game in which attitude plays a major role. It takes guts, patience, and a great attitude towards failure. Losers avoid failing, and failure turns losers into winners. Just remember the Alamo. So while it isn't difficult, it isn't easy. So there are certain things that we can do that we can definitely do so if you have the ability to find the money you can very easily buy assets but whether those assets are going to be good assets that is the question if i gave everybody everybody that's watching this morning a million dollars right now would you be able to turn that into more or would you spend some and then not invest it it's or you'd buy things and they might not be the right things and they would decrease in value rather than increase in value. So you might buy um, a particular kind of car that you think will appreciate in value, but it actually decreases in value. And you do this with a number of different assets. You might buy something, buy a property, investment property that you think is good, but is actually not that good. And you end up having to sell it for less than it was worth. The question is, are you able to turn that into more or would that not be the case? But you have to learn. And that's the whole point of what Robert Kiyosaki is just talking about. You need to go bigger and you need to learn and you need to able to figure out how to do it. Okay, overcoming cynicism is the next part. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. Most of us know the story of Chicken Little who ran around warning the barnyard of impending doom. We all know people who are that way. There's a Chicken Little in each of us. As I stated earlier, the cynic is really a little chicken. We all get a little chicken when fear and doubt cloud our thoughts. All of us have doubts. I'm not smart. I'm not good enough. So-and-so is better than me. Our doubts often paralyze us. We play the what-if game. What if the economy crashes right after I invest? What if I lose control and I can't pay the money back? What if things don't go as I planned? Or we have friends or loved ones who will remind us of our shortcomings. They often say, what makes you think you can do that? If it's such a good idea, how come someone else hasn't done it? That will never work. You don't know what you're talking about. These words of doubt often get so loud that we fail to act. A horrible feeling builds in our stomach. Sometimes we can't sleep. We fail to move forward. So we stay with what is safe and opportunities pass us by. We watch life passing by as we sit immobilized with a cold knot in our body. We have all felt this at one time in our lives, some more than others. You will notice this a lot when you see your other friends who are investing and who are making certain amounts of money. And you might notice for yourself that nothing much is happening and you don't have 
the assets that they have. And you are still going to work every day and you notice that they have been improving. And this is a good thing to be able to have a look at and analyze yourself around. And if you notice that you are starting to feel something, then that can motivate you to start getting started to do something. And even if you are just starting to learn, just playing cash flow or playing the online version, which will teach you even more than just playing cash flow, then it will allow you to be able to start to take that action, even if it's just uh, in a game, so that you can start to change that mindset around what is possible for you. And then you start doing it in real life. Peter Lynch of Fidelity Magellan Mutual Fund fame refers to warnings about the sky falling as noise, and we all hear it. Noise is either created inside our heads or comes from outside, often from friends, family, co-workers, and the media. Lynch recalls the time during the 1950s when the threat of nuclear war was so prevalent in the news that people began building fallout shelters and storing food and water. If they had invested that money wisely in the market instead of buying a fallout shelter, they'd probably be financially independent today. When violence breaks out in uh, in a city, gun sales go up all over the country. A person dies from rare hamburger meat in the state of Washington, and the Arizona Health Department orders restaurants to have all beef cooked well done. A drug company runs a TV commercial in February showing people catching the cold. Colds go up, as well as sales of cold medicine. Most people are poor because when it comes to investing, the fill world is filled with chicken littles running around yelling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And chicken littles are effective because every one of us is a little chicken little. It often takes great courage to not let rumors and talk of doom and gloom affect your doubts and fears. But a savvy investor knows that the seemingly worst of times is actually the best of times to make money. When everyone else is too afraid to act, they pull the trigger and are rewarded. Some time ago, a friend named Richard came from Boston to visit Kim and me in Phoenix. He was impressed with what we had done through stocks and real estate. The Phoenix real estate prices were depressed. We spent two days showing him what we thought were excellent opportunities for cash flow and capital appreciation. Kim and I were not real estate agents. We are strictly investors. After identifying a unit in a resort community, we called an agent who sold it to him that afternoon. The price was a mere $42,000 for a two-bedroom townhouse. Similar units were going for $65,000. He had found a bargain. Excited, he bought it and returned to Boston. Two weeks later, the agent called to say that our friend had backed out. I called immediately to find out why. All he said was that he talked to his neighbor and his neighbor told him it was a bad deal. He was paying too much. I asked Richard if his neighbor was an investor. Richard said he was not. When I asked why he listened to him, Richard got defensive and simply said he wanted to keep looking. The real estate market in Phoenix turned, and a few years later, that little unit was renting for $1,000 a month, $2,500 in the peak winter months. The unit was worth $95,000. All Richard had to put down was $5,000 and he would have had a start at getting out of the rat race. Today, he has still done nothing. We're going to leave it at that one because I think that is a very, very strong point. So we get very afraid of things that might not happen. Uh, there's a very famous quote by Mark Twain. There are many things that I worried about, but most of them, uh, with things that I didn't need to worry about, or something along those lines. Don't quote me on that one. Um, we'd need to look it up to see exactly what the quote is. But the idea is most important, and the idea is that there are certain things that we are afraid of, but it might not turn out that way. So it might be a lot better. It could be worse, but it might be a lot better than we think it's going to be. So when it comes to investing, you don't have to jump straight in. You don't need to put real money into things, but you can start playing cash flow. You can start to talk to friends and get to know what other people are doing. You can look around you and see who is investing and who isn't. You can start to have a look around at all these different things in order to be able to take that first baby step. And then once you've taken that baby step and you're starting to feel a little bit more confident, you can take another step, another step. And then eventually you get to the point where you are learning new things. You've got new friends around you because now 
obviously you're going to be hanging out with a lot of people who are more successful because you're going to be um, getting to know all of these different people who are doing similar things to you. Um, when I got my cafe for the first time, I remember my friends changed completely. So I had the cafe and all of a sudden I was friends with more cafe owners around where I was, uh, where I had the cafe. Um, I had friends who were in different organizations that I used to visit. So I used to have, um, I think there was a liquor license accord that I was in and there was another uh, association that I was a part of. And I joined many different things um, in order to be able to be around people who owned cafes and who I could ask questions of and who I could learn from and who I could support and get their support. So you start to change the, the kinds of people that you have around you. And then when you do that, you can then start doing bigger and bigger things. That's when you can learn how to do those bigger things and achieve really amazing results. So we're going to leave it at that. If you enjoyed that, if you'd like to um, have my commentary on the rest of the book, you can find it at the Passive Cash Flow Club on uh, YouTube. So feel free to go across to the Passive Cash Flow Club. Make sure you subscribe. Um, we've got a video that is going out tonight um, at 4.30 Sydney time, 4.30 p.m. This one's going to be on the credit card. It's a five part, it's a five chapter uh, set. We're going to do them one by one every day. And then at the end, we're going to put the complete video as well. We've got a couple of different topics that we're going to be talking about. Um, this first one is whether you should get a credit card or not. Uh, we're going to be talking about how much you should invest um, as a percentage of uh, the money that you earn. Uh, we're going to have a talk about lots of different other topics, real estate, stock market, how certain things work, how you can get started, um, different, um, different paper trading things that you can do, different ways in which you can practice, different questions with regards to all of these different finance topics that you might be interested in. So get in touch with me and let me know what kind of questions you have. You can do that on Instagram at business underscore team underscore six underscore official, and you'll be able to get in touch with me and let me know what kind of questions you have around finance and getting started or improving your investing. And you can also ask about cash flow, and I'll get my VA, my virtual assistant, to get in touch with you and let you know how you can be a part of the cash flow game and especially that online version that we have, of which we actually have one running tonight. So I'm very excited and looking forward to perhaps meeting you tonight in person. Well, not in person, but um, virtually, but in real time where we can actually have a chat and talk online. So I'm looking forward to that. I would love to meet some of you. Uh, so feel free to get in touch with me that way on Instagram, and then I will make sure that you can get the details so you can come and join us tonight. It is a great night all the time, and there is so much learning, and it will shift your brain and the mindset that you have into believing that you can do things that you otherwise wouldn't be doing. Um, so there's lots of exciting things that I'm working on to be able to get more of you investing or investing more smartly so that you can achieve the goals and dreams that I know that you have. So on that note, speaking about goals and dreams, I'm going to leave you to go and get some work done towards your goals. Uh, reach out on Instagram. Let me know what kind of questions you have, what kinds of things you're struggling with, what you'd like to learn about, and hopefully see some of you at Cashflow tonight. So get in touch on Instagram, business underscore team underscore six underscore official. I'm looking forward to meeting you. Thank you so much for joining. And it was so good to see you, Mladen, on Zoom. And I'll see you all very soon. Uh -huh.